Yep. Hello. Welcome to this episode of Let's Talk Death. I'm Fran Solomon. And I'm Andy McNeil. And we're thrilled to be your host for these conversations. Let's Talk Death is brought to you by Heal Grief, a social support network creating community after someone has died. Everything we do is inspired by our core belief that no one should ever grieve alone. Our goal with this program is to have a friendly chat with some amazing people so we can help normalize and educate our Heal Grief community. Our guest today is Kyle Lauder. Kyle Lauder is an Emmy-nominated and award-winning actor and producer. He was accepted into the School of Visual and Performing Arts at Syracuse University and began their intensive BFA program. However, in early 2000, during his sophomore year in college, an invitation to attend a talent showcase in Los Angeles immediately relocated him to the West Coast. Kyle signed with representation shortly after his arrival in Los Angeles and signed modeling contracts with Abercrombie and & Fitch and Speedo. In July of 2000, five months after his relocation from New York, Kyle landed a three-year contract role with the NBC daytime drama Days of Our Lives, a role that would later bring him an Emmy nomination in 2003. After a six-year run on Days, Kyle moved networks to CBS signing a contract with The Bold and the Beautiful. He would leave that role in 2011 to pursue a new opportunity in the music industry. After a year of recording and touring in Italy to promote his self-titled debut album, Kyle hit the stage with the original Las Vegas company of Broadway's Rock of Ages, playing Stacy Jack. Following a year in Las Vegas, Kyle returned home to Los Angeles to begin work as the executive producer of the miniseries Ladies of the Lake, which ran for two seasons on Amazon's Prime Video. Currently, Kyle has three feature films being released in 2020. Kyle, we are delighted to have you as a guest on our show. Oh, it's my pleasure, really. Thank you for having me. So, Kyle, what a career so far. Yet, I'd like to focus on one of your upcoming motion pictures, The Ravine. Yes. For our audience, it's a film filled with suspense, trauma, and drama, and how the essential role hope plays in healing after tragedy. What inspired you to accept that role? Oh, goodness, where do I begin? <laughs> <laughs> um, I read, I, I'll make a long story short, but I, um, you know, I was sent the, the, the script, and the second that I read it, I could see what an incredibly powerful message, um, I should say multiple messages that, that the film really delivers. Um, and you know, what actor doesn't want to be a part of something that, that conveys such a, you know, the, the film, the storyline of the film is just so beautifully tragic. And, and, and again, the, the messages that come through are, were, were so powerful. So, of course I read this and, and wanted to be a part of it. It wasn't until, and this is a crazy story, it wasn't until I was boarding a flight to go down to New Orleans uh, to start shooting the film that I found out that it was actually, it's actually a, a true story. <laughs> you know, um, it was like, and that, you know, that, that's when I found out that, you know, Robert and, and Kelly Pascuzzi are, are in fact the, the couple that, that went through these, these, you know, horrific events and was set to meet them like three hours later, you know, when I, when I got to New Orleans, it, it just shifted. I'm like, this is true. You know, it, 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 you know, I thought that this is, you know, this happened. It was, you know, so immediately I, I wanted to, you know, uh, of course I was going to meet Robert and Kelly anyway, but um, now I really wanted to pick their brain about respectfully, of course, but, but just about, you know, if this really happened, you know, help me understand, you know, because I, you know, my particular role is uh, I'm playing the, the older brother of, of um, the man who, who committed these horrible, you know, murders. Um, and I was like, I, I just need help diving into, this is a real person and this really happened. I really want to pay uh, to, to do this accurately. I don't want to make anything up is what I'm trying to say. So, well, um, that leads me to my next question. Thank you for the lead in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a personal death loss experience that helped you in your character role? Uh, yes, very much so. Um, I've, I've, 
I've experienced, uh, you know, I guess relatively so, a fair amount of death in my life. Um, you know, all, all, my, all four of my grandparents, both my mom and my dad's parents have all passed. And, um, you know, my, my dad's brother, my uncle passed. So I've had death in the family over the years. Um, but the first um, experience with death that I had came very young. Um, and it was, it was my, one of my best friends in high school. Um, I was 16 years old. It was 1997. And um, he was uh, he was not in high school anymore. I, think, I believe he was a freshman in college at Princeton University, and and he was killed by a he was in a car that was hit by a drunk driver, and he was the only fatality um, in the accident. Drunk driver lived. The driver of his car lived. He was the only fatality, and that whole experience really um, it's cliche to say it changed my life, but but it really really did. Um, I was a 16 year old kid who was growing up in, in a, um, for lack of a better word, just kind of a utopian childhood. You know, I was growing up just outside of, you know, a small town outside of New York City, you know, called, literally called Pleasantville uh, in, in Westchester <laughs> County, New York. And, you know, it was, it had a great family and friends and, and it was just a, like a utopian childhood and then through high school and, and then this happened and it really, it, it kind of shook this small town that I, you know, the really town really came together with this. You know, it was held in a big church and a tent, the funeral services were held in a big, the, the big church in a town. And, but from, you know, the phone call that I'll never forget, it was like early morning on a weekend to, to the open casket wake, to the funeral services, to the, you know, to the burial and, and everything. It was like, I honestly don't think I cried during the entire experience because it was like, a, a, like an alternate universe. Um, so really, back to your question, but I kind of wanted to explain the backstory um, yeah, please. of it. But yeah, it was, um, you know, staring 16 year old kid looking into a, into a, a casket and seeing somebody, your friend that you, you was full of, literally full of life, you know, and that's, yeah. you get where I'm com coming from, right? I, it, it was just a, I don't, but again, I, I don't think I cried until, like, like it was kind of all like he was in, you know, in the mausoleum, so to speak, because he was, he's, I don't know what it's called, but he's not in the ground. He's, but, but yeah. until that was over, I don't think that I processed anything. And then it was just, you know, that then I processed it and it was like waterworks. But um, getting back to, that's the backstory, getting back to your question is that, you know, I think of that, or I, and then of course, all my, the death of, of my family members, you know, my, my extended family over the years where you have to draw on that. And because I, you know, it's, it's obviously I'm, I'm really actually not the brother of a, of a murderer and somebody who committed suicide as in the script. So it's like, how do I go to this place of, of processing, you know, this grief and, and this trauma. And honestly, that's without even really forcing it. That's kind of where I went to with this character is that he gets this news, but it's, it's so horrific that it's not immediately like, Oh my God, it's, it's just kind of like, and then yeah. you're, then you know, and then all like in real life, actually, I, it was kind of, it wasn't. It's not until my character is is, um, and without giving away the film, but, but it's not until the character is like in the church during the funeral does he actually kind of break down. Um, yeah. So I did. I did. Yeah. Long answer to your question. I, I I did have to pull from from personal experiences. And you were talking about how you actually were. Um, I'm going to use the word shock, numb, yeah, during the course. funeral, and, and then afterwards you were able to process it. Have you, other than utilizing that in your, in your career, um, pulling on those emotions, how has that perhaps made a difference in your own life? Just the ability to, I think it's a great word, is, is just the ability to allow myself to process. Um, I humbly say that I, and I can only speak from experience and I, you know, I've, I know people personally and mutually or, you know, by extension that, that don't allow themselves to process things. No. They, 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 either they, it's kind of maybe a two way street where on one side of things they're saying to themselves, well, I, I, I should be crying right now. Why am I not crying? Why am I not upset by this? Yeah. You know? 
and because everybody else is maybe, but they're not. Then that was me, you know, at 16, where people are throwing themselves on this casket and, yeah. and I'm sitting there like not even remotely feeling like I want to cry. And then, and then like confuses, you know, to why that's, you know, or then you have maybe the opposite and I'm not an expert in this, please, but, but my, from my own experience, it's, it's. That it's, makes you an expert, your own experience. Yeah. But, but for Ben, thank you. But then from maybe the other side of things, maybe people, you know, want just to, to let loose and break down, but then are saying, can't, you know, I have to think, you know, I have to think positively. Um, but either way, you come to the same crossroads, which is the process and, and allow yourself to have the self-awareness to say, how am I feeling? And however that is, is okay. <laughs> You know, so yeah, that's if that answers your question. Well, yeah, and letting yourself have those feelings. Yeah, you know, it's the yes. sense of when we when we internalize things and don't express what's fully going on in our lives. I mean, there's plenty of research. It makes us physically sick. Um, yes, our physical bodies, our mind are impacted by those things. Absolutely, I've I've done extensive studies. I'm 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 like a I'm a, such a student of, of the human mind and, and uh, human potential and, and mind, body, and soul. I would, you know, I could talk for days on this and I won't, but, but I, I say that to, to give kind of some breath to what, what, I, what I'm about to say is that absolutely, you know, our, our minds and our emotions have the ability to make us sick. You know, it's disease is really dis-ease within our body. Um, we are the only species on this planet that can make ourselves sick by thought alone. Yeah. You know, and this has been proven, and we won't get into that in de into detail, but it is a scientific uh, fact. And, um, but yeah, you're absolutely right by that. And, and people, through the mere process of, um, you know, instead of expressing their emotions or expressing how they feel, um, they uh, suppress it. And then suppression goes into repression, where all of a sudden they're not even aware that they're, yeah. they have trapped energy within their body, these trapped emotions, and those, that trapped energy manifests itself in physical dis-ease within the body. Um, and then in external circumstances as well. So really not, to get full circle here, not being, number one, self-aware of how you feel, number two, being accepting of that, you know, will have adverse effects to yourself. So, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with it. And unfortunately, um, society uh, today, most of society believes that grief has an expiration date. And so when someone is, is feeling those emotions of grief that for whatever reason are evoked, whether it's two years or five years or 10 years later, Absolutely. Um, they, most people feel that they don't have permission to feel the way they want. I'll get over or that it. There's something, five years. Yeah. Or that there's something wrong with them for still, for still having those emotions. Um, so it's really, yes, it's, it's educating and, and really just having the conversations and trying to change the culture. Um, really letting people know that it's so normal and it's okay. Um, my dad died in 98 and I'm still having my emotions. And, and who's to say that that's not, that to your point, like who's to say that, that it's time for you to not have those emotions anymore? I mean, heck, you're, you could be, you know, 30 years later, which is pretty much where we're at with that, you know, and, and some, you see something or something reminds you of him. Who's to say you can't feel that? That, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I mean, to this day, you know, each, you know, one of my grandparents or, or my friend Ricky Modica, I forgot that Ricky Modica, Richard Modica was his name, um, who died in the car accident in the high school. But anybody who I've ever lost, there's always something that, that you see or, or hear or smell, taste, touch, something that, that sends you back to a moment or a memory of somebody that you lost. And who's to say you can't have a moment? or longer or whatever to, to just process that and say maybe it's a smile because it's a good memory or or you let out a little cry because you do miss them and anyway i'm on board with you humbly to say that i there's nothing you feel how you feel and who's to say you shouldn't feel that way so. 
Well, if you think about the way we're made as human beings, in a lot of ways, we're the sum of the relationships we've had in our lives. And so it's the, the whole thought that we could, even though someone's dead, that we could disconnect that, um, that connection that we have with them, the love we have with them. Just because someone dies doesn't mean that we stop caring about them or stop loving them in yeah. some way. And so it, you know, those are those are, are true emotions, whether the person's physically present with us or not. Yeah, um, and I would, yeah. I would, and you know, I I learned, you know, Robert and Kelly Pescuzzi have become dear friends of mine and mentors of mine um, through this process, and and you know, from the meeting them on day one of of filming, you know, all the way to now, you know, we talk at least once a week. Um, about life and they truly are my mentors and in every way is in addition to being dear friends. But I am so, you know, and I don't want to put words in their mouth, you know, cause I know you guys are going to talk to them as well. But from to my experience, you know, with, with knowing them, the way, what I take from that is I am so inspired by these two people that, that took such a horrific um, situation, I guess for lack of a better word um, in their life and really have, you know, used it to, for good. Almost embraced it. Yeah, not to, like, not to sound cliche, but have said, we're not just going to take what happened and, and bury it deep, but we're going to, you know, we can help people with this somehow, <laughs> some way, you know, was their thought process way back then. And now, gosh, you know, this, you know, this film is, is, it's, it's going to be released on such, so many people are going to be affected by this. And there's so many, like I said, it takes me back to my original reading of the script last fall, where I, I'm so happy that, 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 that this message, you know, it started with Robert's book, The Ravine, and then the, the, that's what's being, the book is being turned into the movie. But I'm so happy for them and just for the concept that, that these beautiful messages, um, that you can find, you know, the diamond in the coal. And, and that these messages are being are going to be released to people, you know, on, on a massive scale. And I really, I truly do believe that it's going to help people. And I'm, I'm so, I'm happy for them, but I'm also inspired by them, by them in the same regard. Yeah. Well, Kyle, we, we only have a few minutes left, actually. Yeah. Time flies by. Yeah. But um, yeah. if, someone's, if someone's listening to the episode and they want to connect with you or, or with your work in film or music, or how, how might they go about doing that? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm on both Twitter and Instagram. That's probably the best. I mean, for, I guess for anybody these, these days, right. Um, you know, I, anything and everything that I'm up to, whether it's, you know, cooking dinner or, <laughs> or spending time with my daughter all the way to, you know, professional announcements that of, of upcoming projects and things. So that's at Kyle louder 22, um, on both Twitter and, and Instagram. And I'm verified with a blue check. So it is me that, there's a lot of people out there, you know, that try to make fake accounts and reach out to people. Make sure that when you search Kyle Louder on Twitter, Instagram, um, that I have that blue verified check there. Otherwise, don't follow them. Don't listen to them. Okay. But both yeah. Twitter and Instagram is where you'll basically find everything. Great. And just a plug in for updates on the ravine and Great. its progress and release. Uh, there's a website uh, called theravine.info. So Kyle, we want to thank you for being a guest here at Let's Talk Death and for sharing your journey and the story behind your um, grief and, and how it inspired your um, acting and, and, and film work. Thank you. It is truly my pleasure. Thank you both so much for having me. Yeah. And thank you to those who were joining us for this episode of Let's Talk Death. If you would like to learn more about Heal Grief, please visit us at healgrief.org. At HealGrief.org, you can learn more about all of the programs and resources of Heal Grief, including our national network of support for grieving young adults called, let's, called Actively Moving Forward. Make sure you sign up on HealGrief.org to receive our newsletter for links to future episodes of Let's Talk Death. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Let's Talk Death.